it. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sri Lanka series of Crusader Kings 3 here on the uh, Lord Master channel, in which uh, the realm is obviously still the same as it is, which will remain the case for the rest of the series because I do not start wars, nor do I have territorial ambitions. I'm what I'm basically doing, unlike all of my past Crusader Kings 3 series is that I will be doing the complete opposite of what I usually do and that's the whole idea of all oh, map painting expand to this amount of borders or in this case in the Indian region unite the entirety of India no 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 it's gonna be sticking with the territory integrity of Tamapani and will remain so if there's gonna be any significant territorial changes of any kind it's likely gonna come from them or or in an unusual cases, since there are no factions at the moment, of any unusual case where um, the realm would fracture if anybody tries to start a uh, disillusioned faction. And by the way, and that's a, another thing, like whenever Vijayabahu passes away and then the sons take over some of the lands, and it kind of gets me to thinking, well, what happens if somebody threatens a war? I mean, sure you, you know, tried to, you know, Defend against the attack in a war, win the war, attack someone in a war, even if it's outside of it. Well, whatever faction demand that they want, give it to them. Even if it's disillusion. For the sake of preventing, you know, any phase progress towards purification, and knowing that if we're either in the accumulation or purification, and if it wants to go back to degeneration, do your best to avert that. We just have to maintain the status quo at all times. Now, I am 56 years old, still feeling fine, practicing asceticism and I get stomach ache, but I'm medicating with company and I'm feeling strong as I've always been. Still got the scars from the uh, Liberation War long ago. But, we still have uh, plenty of work to do regarding save up your money and continue the support of the Sangha. Especially that we've been going back and forth with purification accumulation. I need to go towards accumulation. I mean, it would be the best option. So that way, each passing year, there'll be no negative drops for um, each of the... Um, again, show it. Um, each of the prominence. But now it has fallen off, so I feel a little bad about that. Um, well, do not worry. We're currently building a, a temple, which won't be until 1100. I don't wonder why that takes a long time. And the other alternative is a line with another Sri Lankan monastery. Which I've been trying to do that. And I'm thinking about giving Mahavihara a chance to um, grow its prominence because I'm trying to balance things that's my idea I mean I'm not going to switch it right now because this one's been giving me stewardship and what does Mahavihara give you with the uh, patron trait learning ah. also trying to get this land back out of control and still would love to build a city of Trincomalee one day. And then two temples out there, as I can imagine. And over here there's a small Tamil minority, while having a large minority of Sri Kula Shaktists, which is a mixture of both Tamil and Sihala. That also kind of makes you wonder, well, why don't you convert in case if your home county goes Hindu? Well, there's a reason for that. Because converting a county also adds towards purification. So if Hinduism does spread around here, leave them alone. But as for the vassals, that's at their own behest. I can't do anything about that. I cannot interfere. I keep forgetting about this idea of creating an accolade, but can exchange hostages. Hmm, let me see. You 
never really done much for the daughter. It's like, okay, what can you give me in return? I'm just looking. Or... These are the ones that you're willing to accept. Some court here. What, not related? Is related to the old man. No claims. That's an idea. Claimants. Look them up. You know, it would be better if I were. I was just thinking in my mind. Okay, big one. Look, you swap hostages as an assurance of mutual peace. That's what that is for. And, uh,. Hostage, a close family member of the ruler sent away from their home court as assurance of peace or submission. Your reputation of rulers who declare war despite sending or receiving hostages will be dramatically damaged. And war debts may freely execute hostages of their enemies. Well treated hostages are likely to become loyal to their warden, who may gain a hook, even become friends. Hostages must be landless children, siblings, nieces, nephews, or grandchildren of their home court's ruler. Wardens have a chance to gain a perpetual hook on a child hostage when they come of age, based on personality, opinion, and years spent at the warden's court. Now, perpetual hook? The perpetual hook is a hook that you might have on a character who owes you a favor, or that you have manipulated to do it to, to your will. They cannot be used to force someone to become your agent in a murder, and do not provide passive benefits. For that, a strong hook is necessary. Perpetual hooks are not spent when used, but instead go on a cool down before they can be used again. So that's what that's for. Again, I've never done this before with um, assurance of mutual peace. Look, what would happen? It's like, it's like yes, um, one I'm sent comes a hostage. Uh, you know, you're sending a sickly child. And there is a potential that the sickle child dies over there. Does that mean I get to keep this uh, person here? But doing that, I'll earn prestige and renown for that. Because the Chola has a higher level of splendor than me. Well, of course. Theirs has been around longer than ours. And in fact, for him, he will earn prestige. Because I have a much lower level of splendor. Other wardens at war with home courts may freely execute hostages. Home courts and the wardens suffer penalties from attacking each other. Plus, he's terrified of me, so he's craven, so okay. Okay. But that's from the man has no claimants. Oh, sorry about that. You are the heir of Tagadur, Cholapuram, and uh, Talakad. Also, he was the ward. Cultural acceptance, religion, the differences. Again, something that I want to try for the first time, just to see how that works. So it's like, yes, I'd be willing to give my sickly son away to that, and then I 
who I have focused, who would be my hostage. So we exchange hostages. Again, something I want to experiment with because I have not watched anybody else's playthrough ever since this DLC came out just to know how hostages work, but I want to see it for myself. All right? There's a first time for everything. And if it's a bad investment, then it's a bad investment. So what do you say? I must accept your personal exchange with my son and your son as hostages. Well, if it dies, and well, what happens if um my son dies while your son is still here with me? So again, I'll learn prestige and renown for this. Um, so look up here. All right, Let's see how much I get out of this. Also, is currently traveling at the moment, so please wait. Let's exchange hostages. Cross to the Lion Bridge. Ah, yes. Have an alliance with the Pandyas. Which we have no quarrel with the Pandya. We see them as a useful ally from within. Should there ever be a situation where the uh, Kingdom of Tamilakan breaks down, and I'll be willing to support uh, the Pandya to be the ones to run the whole region. What's this? A hunt. Oh no, don't join any hunts. That leads to purification. Just for that. Try to go on a hunt. Three progress. Okay. That's for anybody that's involved. So ignore that call. The work I've done building up relations with the local Middle Eastern community have paid off. They recently agreed upon me in a number of advantageous business deals due to their networks on the Silk Road. We will surely together earn a great profit. The silk must flow and spices slaves to horses all triggered to be significant. That's better than major. This is the best one you can have. 1.2 a month for the next 10 years. Excellent. Is he here yet? About to be. 320. I am informed my hostage of Hervies as at last arrived from Trolla. I'm sure my people will make him feel right at home. The pact is in place. Okay, so come my hostage. And then, um, your son Anikanga has arrived in Chola. Consider our pact confirmed. Very good. Okay, so, he's here. And so is my son. Right, now that you're here, I would like to raise you. A dough. Oh, switch in culture and faith. I don't. It's a. I was about to say, what would you say about that? If you were to do either option. Just only him. I'm a recipient. He's my hostage, so. Would they take issue with that? Or just raise him as your own? Because that's how it works. There is absolutely no reason to convert faith or culture over the other. I would do that if it was against a country that I dislike and have claims against, but I got none. So I'll raise you as if you were my own, alright? I got a good couple of years ahead of me. Excellent. More stewardship. More tax, I should say. Speaking of tax, can't do that again till the next six years. And speaking of renown, here's something I should do, which I've never done before. Ancestor veneration ceremony. By showing love and respect to our ancestors, the weakness that has plagued my daughter since her birth finally released its hold on her. Relief washes over me as I see Paduma running around with all the other children. May you grow strong. 
The ancestors deserve to be honored and venerated in a lengthy ceremony. So anticipate rewards from posting a... Um, hang on, man. I just received news that the temple, which ordered to build a while back, has finally been completed. How inspiring it is to see the Buddhist statue that adorns the main hall. Many will benefit from this temple, which will serve as a spiritual center for the local monastics and laity. It is simply beautiful. That'll help all of y'all's prominence. Especially with ours. So, oh, may gain random amounts of prestige, piety, and renown. The max amount of these resources you can gain depends on your level of splendor, virtues, and sins. I have no virtues and sins, but the level of splendor is insignificant. So I may gain a tiny bit of, of either of these. For context, ancestor veneration is a major part of many cultures around the world. By partaking in ceremonies and rituals to honor and remember one's ancestors. One can ask them for blessings, advice, or assistance, as well as reinforce ties with living family members and demonstrate one's uh, low piety. So either a lay ceremony or a sacred ceremony. This is for focus on the answers themselves and less involvement with the Theravada Bekus. The minimum amount of prestige you randomly gain is higher than compared to the sacred ceremony. Well, as a zealous man, we gotta go for sacred, which will greatly involve the Theravada Bekus, so that we honor not only our ancestors, but the Samsara as well. Which, uh, the minimum amount of piety you randomly gain is higher than compared to the lay ceremony. So by venerating our ancestors, we build bonds to acknowledge each other, but between ourselves and the divine as well. There are some locations you can choose, of which way works better. There's some church holdings you can take. Within your country, of course. But you can pick anywhere else, but do it in areas that has better effect. So we'll go over there. By respecting our ancestors, we respect ourselves. Okay. Ah, I see. A modest, which is no cost. It'll give the ancestors a modest but respectable offering. And your dynasty will gain only up to 20 renown. How much if we increase it? 50. Hmm. Give the ancestors a large grand offering. And your dynasty will gain up to 35. We are only here because our ancestors, uh, so they deserve only the very best of offerings. Remember, I'm a distant cousin of the old Singhalese royal family that once ruled here for hundreds of years, long ago. So, let's begin. No need to bring the Silk Road merchants, it's just a travelogue. We'll go along the hill district into the jungle. Into the uh, scene of these Harn uh, homeland, Hartland. There you go. Time to start the journey of Mahagama for the ancestor veneration ceremony. I'm sure the headache and hassle of organizing should be well worth in the end when we reach our destination, or at least I'll have the hope that is the case, because otherwise all the stress of preparing over the trip would have been for nothing. We go through these houses for a good reason. Now bear in mind, the ancestor worship ceremony is usually applied to um, most pagan faiths uh, and those religions that has the ancestor worship tenant. Buddhism is another, which is why we have this option. And certain cultures with a, uh, a cultural tradition that involves ancestor worship or something like that. I've decided to organize the Ancestor Veneration Ceremony, one on a larger scale than we normally would. It will be held in Mahagama, as I felt the accommodations there would be suitable for the occasion. Anyway, I send word to the other members of the Vijayabahu dynasty who serve under me or live in my territories to join me on this important occasion. The Ancestors will be most pleased. 
Yes. My ancestors. All the way back to Manavana. A gift of entertainers from Budo. An envoy arrived from Ratlar Budo today, encountered by a large entourage. It turns out that he wishes to give me a large troop of skilled entertainers in Slaves from Ryadama. These include musicians, dancers, acrobats, and even beautiful slaves and courtesans. Gifts of skilled people are common across the prosperous lands of Eurasia and the so-called Silk Road, as they demonstrate the wealth, status, and authority of a ruler like uh, Mudo. I am, of course, flattered by such a gift. These entertainers will become a valuable part of my court, ready to provide entertainment to my courtiers and guests at a moment's notice. A great Agarada like myself deserves such a gift. He gains a bit of renown. I get to have these entertainers for the next 10 years. So yes, another ruler recently presented a group of skilled entertainers from across Silk Road to this crowd, including musicians, acrobats, dancers, courtesans, beautiful slaves, and more. These new members of this character's core will do much to enhance their new master or mistress status. Plus one diplomacy, bit of prestige, a bit of personal scheme power, and monthly court grandeur change up a bit as well, and jumped up the court grandeur. Thank you very much, old friend. How you feeling, health-wise? He's still fine. He got a significant. Gift. He still has that significant gift of Silk Road medicine from the Himalayas, and also has minor intel from Silk Road. Thank you very much. Even though I was on my way to the ancestor worship. It's only about a month before it begins. Obvious is obvious. Yeah, it's part of that yearly drift catalyst due to many factors. Well, over here, not so much, unfortunately. Although, there's that plus one. I assume it's just building a city holding. Building, building in the city holding. We're not quite halfway there. All right, ants. Uh, the, the other family members who are here, they part of this ancestor worship ceremony. Huh? I could find no reason to keep your son uh, as another kind of hostage any longer. Loss of prestige income. Oh, so I thought it would jump up the number. No, that's monthly gain. Well, it's just... Does that mean I have to give you back? Yeah. Or is it because they... I mean, did we make a bad trade? Does that mean I have to give your son back? That's per deal. Also, a claim? Ramnad. That's over here. Whatever you do. Uh, well, no, no. They screwed it up. Not one of my friends. Plus, that belongs to my friend's territory, who is in the middle of a hunt himself. Today, I've gathered members of my family to pay respect to our ancestors in a grand ceremony. Today, as we perform the traditional Theravada rites, invocations, ritual offerings, and gestures that typify these ceremonies. 
We reflect on our forefathers and foremothers, the struggles they went through, as well as the wisdom and help they continue to provide us to this day. Following the ceremony, we gather for a family meal and spend time with each other. We reaffirm in our hearts that the memory of our ancestors cannot be forgotten. We must do our best to honor their legacy with righteous acts. One can only hope if they are watching us from beyond, uh, that they are proud of what the latest generation of the Vajrayabahu family has accomplished. It is always the proper to pay respects to one's ancestors. 51 piety, 11 prestige. All family members attain the ceremony to gain a random amount of prestige piety depending on their virtues since level of splendor. And our dynasty only gained one renown. Yep, one renown. We can only hope that our ancestors are pleased with our offerings. Well, in piety, but as far as dynasty renown, probably not. As I said, okay. You sent him back to me. Does that mean I'm gonna have to send him away? Or is he for keeps? Plus, I'm not even taking care of the boy. I'm on my way back. Oh, wait a minute. I was about to say, um, was he with me the whole time or no? Ditch! He shouts in panic. Soon thereafter, I hear a loud cracking sound. Like that wood banking over my pace to find a sound. I step out of the leaves and see the splitter remains of my wagon wheel. Uh, I'm sorry, my liege. It was my turn as I got I fell asleep in the wings. Oh boy. I thought I took the boy with me on the trail, but no, he's not old enough to travel. Except one time he was here. Is he mad at a hostage? No. And, uh, what have you done? Worship the major Sri Lanka deity. I saw that. That leads to purification. I am informed by the guard that my son, Anikanga, approaches Vijayavarajapura. Though it seems it was only yesterday he departed for Chola. We will catch up when I home. There's so much to catch up on. Does that mean I have to send him back? As per deal? I mean, I could return the hostage. But would that be making him happy? Then again, what can he do? He's terrified of me. He's craven. Also, I never paid attention of... What are we doing? Wants to waste something glorious. Okay, how much? Competent Ukraine. 50. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you for putting your trust in me, my lord. Not a bug, uh. Oh, smiles continues here. Confidence is not this place where I spent years practicing my techniques and woven some truly wonderful rugs and drapes. For you, though, I think a tapestry would be best. A well woven one that can command the attention of a room and say something about its own. The only question is what should the tapestry show? One second. It affects a court here. Like that more dynasty now. So why not? Something that illustrates the history of the Vajayabha Agarajiya. I'd like to see more of that. But uh, are among the most powerful vassals of my realm. Never know how to uh, keep them happy so they don't go around stirring up trouble. Perhaps flattery is the way to go. Anyone would be pleased to have something made in their name. One day, I just have the right thing in the making. So I'd let my beneficiary, Edelberger, know that I am dedicating a masterpiece to my trustworthy vassal's advice. Then again, it is my artifact, so maybe I should just. Now, dedicate to these two men the good Tamil Buddhist and my best friend. Dedicate to them. For once. Oh, 
Oh, good. Building a city holding. City building. How do you get buildings and holding confused? Remember, at any given time. Whoa, my goodness. 180 gold. Build a. You will lose all trade experience or monastery trade you currently have, should you switch. But would it hurt its prominence? That's the real question. Because I'm thinking about switching over to uh, Mahavihara. Give that a chance. Samidata. This is my daughter, yes. Showed curiosity of her ancestors growing to be more like the child of House Vajirabahu. She is just. Justice runs in the family. Granddaughter of Japala. Sorati, that's from Gujarat. As the only child of it, I say no. The, the only granddaughter of Vikrama Bahu's line. I don't even know if they even like each other. Probably they don't, because that's why they only have one child. Well, two. But the other died sickly. What's our... Uh, it's male preference, yeah, that's agnatic cognatic, you're fine. I thought it was male only. My vassal, Pura Pandana Apaya Kasi. Well met, Leech. I tell your patronage of Adobuga the Weaver. This is his weaving historical record worthy of the Agarada. Please take this gift away. Who don't want to miss this chance to aid in the creation of the masterpiece? He has a reputation of uh, generosity. He just seems to find a new outlet for his spending. Exalted among men. Alright. Support the Sangha again. Frontier monks. Bring me great merit. This, as a patron of Jetavana Monastery, must work together them to further the cause of Buddhism in Tambapani and elevate the land Sangha. Some frontier regions in my territories in Tambapani lack a large presence of monks, so I plan to fund some monastics to move into these areas and to extend my authority in that sort of the Jetavana. I also tend to support the. Uh, Arena Vasi or uh, ascetic forest monks there, since they can assist us in our efforts as they are greatly respected by the locals. In the name of the three jewels. Executed. Now she's the ruler. Executed. She's been captured during a war or intervening. Ah, uh, unfortunately, uh, Karetsata is not around anymore. It's a shame. I was looking to him for how to pitch my accent while learning his language. That said, no need to cut my studies short. I just need someone else to emulate. Well, you're the only one that has the best learning, so maybe him. No, 
This game retains all the previous progress. Oh, one of my friends died. Pneumonia. Met him during the, during the uh, pilgrimage to Bold Gaia. Long ago. Feels like a long ago. Obtaining more hostage. What if I could get more hostages? Not just them, but everybody else's. Hey. You got any, uh. Hey. Actually, you can't do that. That. Oh, well, they're allied with me, officially. Well, what about the chair over there? We have no quarrel with them. Trying to buy happiness. Oh. Now, uh, what do we exchange hostages? Um, Anakanga again, with one of yours, um, sickly too. Do you really want to be doing it? I mean, at least you got someone to What do you say? We'll not accept because, one, he's greedy and, well, he's a dishonorable randomer, so he won't trust you with that. Very greedy and somewhat dishonorable, so he's not that kind of person. Unless I had a hook on him, which would, uh, you know, make it work. And plus, we're not neighboring realms. Stupid idea. What about over in the Maldives? We never bothered with them, because we're not technically neighbors in any way, shape, or form. I don't think they'll accept whatever they're offering. Oh, we'll accept. Okay. Difference in rank. Yes, yes. He will earn prestige. I have a higher level spider. No, no, no. I don't want that. It needs to be someone of the other dynasty that has a higher, you know, than me. This is why I thought that Chero would be a good one. Because they're noteworthy. Not them up there. Has no valid hostages. Well, because you have no children. I think the further the distance you get away from, the less likely they're to accept, I assume. Will not accept because he's a vindictive villain, that man. Yes, distance does, does add up to it. I know there's someone in Chalukya that'd be willing. Very generous, very rational. That's not true. Okay, maybe we found our candidate here. No, because I like to be. <laughs> Lord Master, you dummy. Okay, further away. Last chance. Because I don't want to go too distant. Hello. Learning the language of others. Yeah. That can help you arrange such deals. Even though this is also due to the man's bold and greediness. Is everybody in India such a greedy person? Very vengeful, but very rational. Okay, maybe he could be reasoned with here. <laughs> but, but, reputable. That's higher than ours. Disputed heritage. Disputed heritage. Same house. I will earn prestige and renown. Yes. There you go. It's a long trip. If I ran out of options, I would have gone towards Pagan. Because same faith. Now we had wait to make the deal happen. Under equipped Vikrama, the giant, and then there's me. Look at me compared to him. I'm enjoying a rare quiet moment between councils when Vikrama pulls me aside. My leech, if you get scuffling. 
As your bodyguard, I am honored to protect you, but this is ridiculous. He half unsheaves his blade from the scabbard, drawing attention to the many next to the pits. I can't be expected to do my job with this clumsy bar. Surely quality is everything when it comes to protecting Agarada's life. No. Whatever sword that you have here on your belt, it's good enough. You're a giant. Why don't you use your brute strength to deal with your enemies? You got that? Hello. There goes that money again. My best men need the quality arms, so a good quality weapon of the Gramma's choosing will be forged for him. And he's got himself a fine war hammer. A war hammer of fine craftsmanship. A wrought iron head is mouth on an elegant uh, oak shaft tarnished, varnished to give it a rich dark shine. <laughs> a hammer fit for a giant. <laughs> Don't mess with Vikram. Alright. So, Lakshmi Karadevi is coming here, and I will send him my sickly son. Well, this one has a disputed heritage, unfortunately, but... It's a long way, so just hope nothing bad happens. My daughter Yastara is looking crestfallen over a week now. It is the fifth heavy despondent side of the day that finally gets me to gently cards to the issue. I'm so lonely. All I want is a special someone. Someone to stand by my side of the day and share my bed at night. She paused and shakes that side. What am I saying? You don't understand my plight. Do you, my lord? Look at you. You're so noble looking with those scars. None of this has ever been a problem to you, has it? I know you've never been married, and I'm surprised that you haven't laid with anybody. But then again, you are a shy person, so... I'll help you. Time to right this wrong. You'll do that, my lord? You'll really help me? I recall Yasodara's face sliding up as I agreed, somewhat to weirdly, to help her find love. I'm not exactly the most versed plain matchmaker, though. It's more than hope that suddenly I step forth into the million crowds in Trincomalee to seek out a potential flame. I scanned the market square, taking us several likely candidates, but for Yasudara's sake, I should really be looking for someone who suits her. Someone... I mean, look, she's an honorable gambler. Somewhat bold, somewhat honorable. But I'll say someone who is fair and unprejudiced, because in our house, we believe in justice. We are an honorable house. Hopefully you'll find someone. Someone right. As I continue my search, a figure catches my eye. He seems to be in the process of resolving a dispute between two farmers. He listens kindly to each farmer's side of the story, and delivers an equitable judgment that both seem to agree with. Um, I takes an invitation to my court and promise a man suited to get the flattered and excited man, Vikrama. Not Vikrama the giant, as his name was revealed to be until triumphantly burst through the doors, I spot Yastar engaged in her usual listless moping on the other side of the court. She turns to me expectantly, eyes shining hopefully. Oh dear. He's mostly good, but that sadistic part. Man's bisexual, that's fine. Because, you know. Yeah. What am I talking about? Well, I'll just say, uh. Plus, you're both of the same age. So I'll say, Yasodara, come here. So just. just this man here joins the court. I lose a bit of stress. 50% chance that they hit it off and become lovers. 50% chance that there is no spark. So it's 50-50. They hit it off. Hey. It's your lovers. You 
Well, actually, um, two things. In case they get to lay each other, remember, it's shunned in adultery, but there's no such thing as a bastard. All children are equally legitimate. So if I were you, you are going to marry him right now. <laughs> and plus, he's in the army now. I'll make it out of physical because I say so. Whether they have children or not, that's the least of my issues. The religious militia. A fortnight ago, my Rajpuru hit. Uh, presented me with an idea to establish a religious militia in my domain. Tasked with the enforcement of strict adherence of the dogmas of the faith. Facing the uh, strict adherence... Uh, no, you already read that part. Facing the opposition of all the other councils, Maka defended her plan pointing to the increased levels of control if such a measure is taken. Not for me to decide. Actually, we got out of control. No reason for that. Oh my goodness, 70 stress, just for not doing that. Plus we don't need a religious militia. It's not going to happen. I'm taking a backseat on practicality on this one. That's a big hit. But don't worry, stress will go down over time. You vassals could do more to contribute than Oh, by the way, uh, where's the other person? You know, the one I'm supposed to receive? My acquaintance, uh, oh, neighbor. He commissioned a court, his court poet, Sri Ranga, to write a poem. The peace, peace deals with Lord Lavan, and he has publicly dedicated to me. I have no idea what it says. How far I kept thoughts of myself with the buzz going to make tomorrow. I'll just say, I don't know how I quite feel about this because you wrote nothing to me. And this is his court poet, who allegedly wrote me something. Maybe just a role player back. It's like, here, here's a poem for you. And it's blank. I'll, I'll just say, I don't know how I feel about this. You wrote nothing to me. You didn't write a damn... Your court poet didn't write a damn thing. Ah, yes. Give me that. I could have sworn I thought I've uh Where are you? No, not that one, the one with the disputed heritage. What's her name? Okay, Anikanga is safely arrived. Okay. But who was this other one that I'm Yeah, that's the one. Oh I forgot how boat travel takes long for her to get here. Yeah, it's finally arrived. The pact is in place. Now I'll raise you as you were my own as well. No change of faith or culture. Because we don't want to make people mad. And plus, even if they do, um, they would still... It's 
difference. Level of Splendor difference. That's the reason. Dirgalchola. Nada Pavi. No, sir. Here we got another one. A large silk tapestry of excellent craftsmanship. A cloth depicts a mighty fleet sailing at the seas. On each ship, armed warriors scan the horizon looking for enemies. Powerful vassal tax concept. Wow, that's some tax. Core grandeur bonus. A tiny but arrogant description of woman beneath the main scene states that Agarada Vijayaba, who dedicated his trusted advisors, um, Karuna Nada Kamen and uh, Buddha. Lovely. Oh dear. I had so many hopes for you, my sweetest child. All the things you would learn, experience, and do. There were so many possibilities, a whole life to live. Maybe you had uh, children of your own one day. But now none of these things will ever come to be. Rest in peace, little Anikanga. Died from being sickly. Oh, put that over there. Just see how that tapestry here. Christian art. Mind you, it was made by Adabaga, who is a Longobard. I regret to inform you that your son Anakonga is dead. Forgive me for so utterly failing in my duties as his warden. Hope that you one day forgive me for both our sakes. Whatever transpired here, my daughter, Lakshmi Karavad, uh, Lakshmi Karadevi, is innocent in this matter. It could be. Yeah, he was sickly. And what I did here is kind of. Oh, I don't know. Look, the nicest thing in the world would be to send it back, but I would do that if I were a more compassionate character. But I'm not. If I were more compassionate and forgiving, I'd be willing to do that. But, renowned game. I hear commotion from my daughter's Pandemon's chambers. Hastening inside, I see the wet nurse, Rajita, playing with Pandemon. My liege, perfect timing. Pandama just took her first step. She sounds excited. Holding my girl's hand, she tries to walk around the room. What else she could do? Because <laughs> I'm ambitious. I press her to keep walking. This would gain her prowess. After everything we've been through together, I still cannot believe that Mandala Numa of Parakama, uh, Parakimama, would do things he has done. It is a betrayal of every friendly gesture we have shared, and date. A betrayal of our very friendship we once shared, Red, but now he's made an enemy for life. He will pay. He's no longer my friend. What did he do? I betrayed the friendship? I betrayed friendship! Is it because I didn't get to spend enough time with you? Ah, spliced wine by the lake by Oka of Kyukus. A truly great collection of uh, Manabasa's poetry. Spring and tenderness. She turns her head, does she? My affections reject. This is a shield or just an effect. For her life is my life, and my life to be. As warm and refreshing as fragrant hot tea. Perhaps I'd try my hand of poetry too. Mm. More diplomacy. I think I'll give it a try. I can't rhyme to save my life. 
my hostage, uh, for God's sake, recently been speaking to me exclusively in Sihala, and he does so with remarkable proficiency. I don't get to tell his educators are in the clergy, and such as my Rajpur and Maka are the thanks of his mastery of courtly tongue. Be encouraged to begin. We'll begin. I'll say that's nice. If he wants to speak my language, good. Learn the Saraceni language, which is the language of the Kanalji people. And also, uh, learned Tamil. Already. Well, of course, you always hear Sihala and Tamil tongues very often here. But you're gonna have two sons who's gonna split the lands between them. Yes. Not in a hurry or anything. As much as my son to get it. Remember, you're the heir. One day I would love to send you to university, but that's up to you. Insignificant. Ah, the parlor. Of course, it's like I was just doing more possibility of hostage exchanges. And some of your things like, why do you keep doing that? Well, renown game. Every little bit helps. Not to mention that I would want to get this next. Stewardship or level of fame, domain taxes. Increased chances of getting silk of merchant trade. All that and more would be very suffice. My goodness, North India is a mess. We do have contact with his subjects, but theirs is reputable as well. The king of Billy and Novelis. And also he's near death because he had a botched disease treatment. That's Al Parson. It's been around since the beginning. I've not looked much around the world as of yet. Eric the Fourth still ruling. He's running a piracy operation. <laughs> He's financing a piracy operation. William the Second, William the Conqueror. So Normandy holds England. Norway didn't get it. France is being fractured. 
And I guess Duke has joined the Romans. And Croatia may follow suit. I fear the education of, of Lakshmi Karadevi at your court no longer suits her needs. She is hereby recalled to our care. Should I view unsalted? Oh well. Did what I can. So there she goes. Twins! Sons! Oh, no need to rename. Um, Lahinda and uh, thinking. Ah, yes, name it after my giant bodyguard, Vikram. Mahinda in Vikram. Yes. Oh, at least that there's room for it. You know, I still have their um, hostages. I'm Where the hell are you going? Is he doing his grand tour? No, a hunt. Attending to his hunt way over in the island. That's quite far off. Twists and turns of fate and all in my manners. Said Arthur knows I was cursed the day I met Khan Paul back in the university days. Today, however, that curse has been lifted. Fate has smiled upon me and brought that loathsome swain to his grave. Not one day too soon. I sure did hate that man. Prominence hasn't really been dropping for any of these. In another three years, you can go on another university visit, if you wish, but I'm getting a bit old at this point. I mean, the only th reason that I could go to university, despite the fact that I have a very high education trade now, is to gain more perks that relates to whatever you're currently on, such as this well focus here. Alright, picking up all of these would be good. Would be a good idea. Reducing the holding construction cost would be good because I still would love to build that city one day. If only. Or at least give it another chance to. Um... No, that's another. And I've stated before that I would never participate in a grand tournament because that's like more money to burn. But if someone else were to hold a tournament and is not too far from here, I'd be willing to join to spectate. I don't have the skills for that anymore. Some sturdy, strong youths from the local Middle Eastern community have offered to become my bodyguards. Inspired by my efforts to reach out to their community, they wish to return to favor by ensuring my safety. Elders in their community have vouched for their skills and experience in fighting. Some have even served as mercenaries elsewhere in the Soko for a few years. That they would protect me fiercely and serve me their utmost loyalty. Well, I fear safe already. Significant contingent of Silk Group bodyguards. Plus 3 prowess and plus 15% of hostile scheme resistance. So, yes. Members of the local community of foreign origin along the Silk Road include a number of military veterans that have recently pledged their services as loyal bodyguards to this character. 
All I have is the giant, but a few more couldn't hurt. I still got it. When does this expire? Next year. Because I think I know what I'll do next on which next Silkro community that I should reinforce really swift next. Oh, he's holding a hunt. And it's not from over there. You're going. I ain't. That contributes to purification, which is almost halfway at this point. Everybody must learn just. It is only right to do so. Who are you the mother of? Data Devi. That was daughter of me, Data Devi. Data Devi. Bingo. Any involved ruler goes out on a hunt. Oh, I'm ashamed of you. Especially as a Buddhist. Your first child. Come on. As long as I have more living members in the family, that slowly increases over now. Lots of hard work. I finally learned that blasted language. <laughs> ah. I just sent a letter there. Now oh, it kind of got me to thinking. Chaluka. Maybe I should learn the Kannada language next if there's room. Yeah. Do so. Learn the Kannada language, so that way I may negotiate for more hostage transfers, perhaps, for more renown. Entire realms in revolt. Disillusion. There's a deep, endless hole in my heart. Odo was a constant companion and confidant. To have him ripped from my life feels like a mortal wound which I will never recover. My hand clasps a note he gave me, the last note he will ever give me. I realize bitterly. I try to read it, all I could do is move it away from my face. That precious words contained that are not washed away by my tears. Though there is a crowd of many mourners around me, I've never felt so alone. Oh. Best friend. Died from his wounds. Must have had an accident or something. I don't know what happened, but. Got hurt. He survived by his three children. This is Senna. Decided to maintain his predecessor's close relationship friendship with me. Oh, you are a bad person. You are not like your father, but still, I hope you'll change one day. I will never forget this day. So 50% chance that I experienced some level catharsis. 30% of my grief falls freely, or my grief overwhelms me. 24% chance I fall into depression, become the melancholic. I become melancholic. He was the best. Pick 
trave. Oh boy. There's the attempt suicide option, but that's generally unadvisable. It does affect some of your skills and the fertility, but um, it doesn't affect your prowess though. The daughter of my rival. Yeah. So many My friend uh, Radlaru Sena approaches me, uh, clear doubt in his eyes. He explains to me that his faith is faltering due to his time spent guarding the border against Shaivism and uh, fraternizing with the enemy. His words are not in jest, as he feels that the slightest mistake could push him away from Siddhartha. Yet, this is an opportunity to strengthen our fervor as well as our relationship. I will reignite his fervor myself. 2% chance that he becomes a Shaivist. 97% chance that he reassures faithfulness. You shall remain faithful. Heavens forbid that you become Shaivist. You want to become as pious as your father? Traditional weddings, eh? Can ban this loins. Valor. So they favor brave, stubborn, and impatient. Disfavors craven. That's nice. Remember, you belong to a good house. So after spending so much time with a guardian. Um, it's clear child of my uh, child but I'm adopted our faith. It's a risk worth taking nevertheless. Hmm. You've aligned with the monastery, alright. Jatavana. Good. We're getting further and further away here, unfortunately, based on how it looks now. Get this. You are intervening at the behalf of it. How much does it cost to build that city now? 400. If I had 400 more, I'd be willing to build that. Humble. What is their tradition? Duty. Favors diligent, humble, and impatient. Thank you very much. Um, that's good, actually. Travel speed. Oh, that's much better. I like that. Tiny bit of gain for accumulation. Now we're about to reinforce another. Relations with the uh, next Silk Road community. 
Since uh, my prowess is coming back up, I thought about reinforcing this other one. That helps with the prowess. For once, East Africans. The peoples who come here from East Africa are of diverse origins, including merchants, adventurers, slaves, and more. This would uh, give you plus one prowess and unlocks the decision to draw in gold and ivory exports and increases the amounts uh, of and chances of gifts receiving receiving gifts of special soldiers and character modifiers and improves scheme resistance and prowess. Let's work on it. So now I've decided to reinforce the East African communities in my realm. The East Africans along the trade routes crisscrossing Eurasia and, and Africa have a variety of backgrounds, including merchants, adventurers, slaves, and more. Any of these kinds of people could prove helpful to my goals. They're a diverse, skillful lot. Gold and ivory. Thanks to my connection to the East African communities in my own, particularly the merchants from there, who do or do business with these with those regions? I may want to entice some of them to bring their trade through my lands, as long as I get a cut of the profits, of course. Importing gold and ivory. Monthly income up, prestige up. Oh, so now I negotiate with the merchants operating in East Africa to attract more of their trade to the lands that they govern. Particularly when it comes to lucrative gold and ivory trade that makes up for the bulk of the East African imports. Summon the merchants. Take a drink. Different luxuries are traded across the Silk Road. So, there is nothing particularly special about gold and ivory. In a sense, that said, there are some of the most lucrative and popular exports from East Africa. Crossing land and sea trade routes to arrive in faraway territories. I have connections with the communities who, in turn, have networks across the African coast. Whether they are of native Africans or foreign origin, their traders can procure large amounts of gold and ivory. With the right investments, I have taken steps to entice these merchants to bring their trade in gold and ivory through my lands. And also give me a cut of their profit as well. Let the trade flow. 7.4? 8.1! Damn, why didn't I think of this before? Those Middle Eastern merchants are only good to um, help me with the development of the reconstruction of this country. And we've done well. So they served us well, but now it's time for the, uh, for the Africans to bring their profits here. And also, I may get special soldiers for them, since there's an increased chance of that. Here we go again. It is my right and responsibility to determine what coinage is to be used throughout all of Ajayabahu. The choices I make will determine how the coinage and, and by extension, my realm is seen throughout the world. Let's give this another try to depaste the coinage of an expensive nickel. Haha! Save the fortune on minty the base coins. Made all that money back after we've imported the gold and ivory and we make more monthly income. <laughs> Everything's expensive now. No fancy dreams. I will spare my gold as much as I would like to, but there are other means. September's passed again. Purification 500, so now it's halfway there. Time for you to start saving up. Well, we're still quite a ways there. Now that I have twins. Maya Rama? No. Arvarada Pura. While sitting outside, I was feeling rather thirsty and asked the server to fetch me some water. After drinking it, I felt truly refreshed. It is amazing the effect some cool fresh water can have on a person. That was nice. 
you know, I think it's a good idea to decentralize the realm. Have all your sons inherit something. So that way it gives it more chance for them to pick out their monasteries, go pick them, and uh, see if hopefully they'll make decisions that would help with the accumulation. They all have to make money somehow. Not to mention they'll be following the rules of the house. Everyone has to be just and honest. Five more years and I will enact partition so it could be equal rather than uneven. My spies are informing about a hunter causing a ruckus in, at a local tavern. Friends been spending large amounts of gold bragging loudly about a great deal he struck with a fancy lord in pearls and silk. Apparently he drew a map of the local plains for an unknown nobleman. The spies think the lord must be scheming against me or one of my subjects. Kosra the Persian. Middle Eastern community, one would think. Well, thank you for bringing this to my attention. Gotta be more vigilant. I have my enemies. Oh, not again. The man from Gaia. I used to have a friend there, but now, here goes another one. Now I got more rivals. One would think I am not welcome over there. Ah, finally. The black sheep of the family. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to accept it. It's to have an alliance. So that way, there's a possibility that I may intervene on their matters when needed. And I have been getting a lot of stress lately. I just haven't been the same since my best friend Buddha has passed. Why on earth would I want to do that? Oh, he'll accept it. I was about to say, he would never accept that. Plus, I would beat him, so it would be uneven. And plus, it says nothing about rulers fighting each other in duels. As I patiently wait a fetching of my clothes, a servant says, My lord, uh, no one can find your garments. I'm surrounded by incompetence. I'm gonna storm from my bed chamber. Is the nursery of my daughter, Paduma. I had discovered not only my raiments, but also the girl's wet nurse. I had no part in my age, she dressed herself, that she did respond to the giggle. So, she's a princess of fashion. That's gonna be your nickname. You are the princess of fashion. Because one day, there's possibility you might be considered pretty to some people. Yes, we had a falling out, but I need to go over there and beat him out of it. Why not? I have my sword, which was given to me by my friend Budo as a present. Never for forget this. Plus, thanks to my Silk Road bodyguards from the uh, Middle Eastern, and as well as a little bit of prowess from the Africans, I'm ready to fight. So now, he tries to feint with his spear, only to strike from my heart with a concealed dagger of his offhand. Damn. Well, he's a hunter, so he has the luxury to do that. So 
So now he has more to the vantage. Like the hand. I'll show you how I have the sword. My sword flows around him like water. Each strike chain fluidly to the next. A series of perfectly timed strikes. He tries hesitantly to launch a quick slash at me, but the blow is easily swatted away. My form is good, with only small errors. And he stands passable. I've yet to open up my opponent's guard at all, and I see no way yet to claim victory. Strike, parry, or pass. I leap into action, launching a flurry of quick slashes, drowning myself hard against his guard. I'm wearing it down to reach, expert time strike. The guards and my triumph scum, screams my opponent, swinging his spear fiercely at, around, and near me. His stance is failing. Oh yeah? Goodness to the sword, scum! <laughs> Roaring in my defiance, I throw myself wholeheartedly into the, the belly of powerful cleaves, raining blow after blow down on my opponent. Predictably, it's not long before I force him to his knees. And for there's just one long lazy swing to bring my swords up to the point, point up to his throat. The yield comes the second the cold metal touches his neck. I'm victorious. Though he's put a bit of a damage on my armor here. Siddhartha is my strength indeed. There. There's some stress loss. Just what I needed. No means no. There's no alliance with that. Plus, when my son succeeds me, he'll be the one to choose who should my granddaughter marry. That's in my personal opinion. One of my uh, newest professional services is a diligent fellow, determined even. He always makes sure I do things on time, it pays to have a sermon like him. Indeed. <laughs> That's good. Next year, should I go to university again? Look. You've already studied here, okay. So that means I have to go over there for more studies. And this is how much it's going to cost me. When that time comes. <laughs> so yeah, the old university near Anuradhapura. Yeah. Oh, sickly. Beneficial deal. That's buildings, not holdings. Still feeling fine. Ha. Huh. I guess he died from his wounds since the duel. Serves him right. May not like me, but... He's got a loyal dog, trained to fight dangerous beasts and follow his character wherever they go. Wow. You challenge me to a board game? He's got this. A game of punches. So, this is a... I mean, I've done the board game option before. I used to play chess and uh, an FF Talfo. That I've done that in past series. But never Pachesi. So, this is different. So, in Pachesi, diplomacy counters intrigue. Intrigue counters stewardship. And stewardship counters diplomacy, so this is different. 
This is a uh, friendly game. There's nothing to wager. Right, lot of me dollars already waiting to begin our little uh, purchase match. Sat waiting with a competitive grimace for it across large, writ loss large across features. We're neck and neck, though. Neither of us seem close to it. Cheer up, sour face. That's not good. It's just a little game between friends, right? Oh. I think it would be wise to keep using diplomacy to counter his intrigue. Have you even played Chesa before? I can't tell. So again, diplomacy is countered by stewardship if he were to try that, which isn't going to work out for him. The outcome is a colossal amount of score towards winning, critical success, some score, success, a few crumbs of score, failure, absolutely no score, critical failure. Our match marches on with uh, Yidala continuing with a bland, miscalculated set of moves. Blast somehow this man seems to counter restrain him employed. What the heck? I studied to say extensive exchange of him. I'm sorry to say that by this point I don't think there's any way for you to win. He got lucky. Give it another try. You really do have the easiest tells me, Yidala. Again, I gotta try another strategy. Did you know that you can learn exactly how someone lies by watching their face during potency? Well, I didn't mean just a note. My intrigue's higher than his diplomacy. Barely. You'll never see my moves coming. Ah, didn't work either. He's starting to win. My opponent could try any second. Ah, if only public speaking was easy as your bidding and purchase. Just... One last time. From behind, with a roar, trying to surge in my feet, scattering tokens everywhere. The game of Pachessi is mine. Another fine victor on my indisputable rise towards the world of Q games. Hey, I'd love to play again sometime. That was a great game. I just came from behind. You did well, but I just got very, very lucky. Very, very lucky. Um, I was about to say, you know, you still my house, despite the fact you went back to wherever you once came. Hey, wait a minute. Let me see. Since I just noticed that. Influence wards personality. Pass a personality train on the ward. That's a thing. Ambitious just sells. You spend a bit of prestige to be stress for that. Could that also be applied to... Yes. I did not know that option exists, because I almost never paid attention. Second job. Push I could have sworn I thought you'd done this before. And you got nothing to give me other than just this? Thank you. I fear the education of uh, gives you courts no longer suits our needs. He is hereby recalled to our care. No longer my ward. Ah, oh, well, I got my twin sons to, to look after. 
Hinda and Vikrama for the time being. It has to be at least four years old to influence the ward's personality. So that means this thing with, you know, having, you know, just and I'm a just man feels a little unnecessary. Though it would be nice to place an extra who, you know, would be given that. My, my prowess skill would be lowered by then, the older I get. Lights expired. What happened? Executed. On. So, what was she doing over there? Well, half brother said she don't stand to inherit anything. But, we've got to get you remarried, because, um, you know, you've got to, um, you know, increase the number of members of family that for increases of renown by the time. Wasn't there this one person from uh, Gujarat who keeps asking for alliance? Nope, just married. Lucky you. I recall. Hostage. Never mind then. They'll find someone. Oh, it's fell below. Again. That means more towards purification for this. Now we're friends with these people. Again. It seems more and more likely that purification is going to be the next phase, which will happen in the next century. Feels like it takes uh, less than 50 years to switch from one phase to another. Although faster progress when. Today, a caravan of a well-known merchant has arrived in Vijaya Varajapura. It is said that this trader is famed across Silk Road for carrying all manners of trinkets in good quality from all corners of the world. The caravan will do business in our territory for a while before moving on. Such business is more welcome. Not spending my money on that. On trinkets. Just do your business here and get out. We'll support the Sangha again soon. This would get the Jetavana up, no doubt. Just gotta wait a few. Oh, my health is poor, so I don't have that many to li years to live then unless I switch focus. I do have an idea though. No, wouldn't matter. Just accept your fate. That you're gonna die a natural death. 
As the Buddha said, everything's impermanent. With my leave, my daughter found him when a wet nurse prayed into my chamber. I heard her poses like a herald and proclaims, My liege, you witness a monumental occasion. Padma has a mighty gift to offer you. Go ahead, Padma. Father, I lost a tooth. My daughter proudly presents her toothless smile. How do we have Padma fall into the side? Uh. Okay. I'll just say, I don't have time for this. I, I know it's bad to be saying that I would have been nice to her, but... Look. <laughs> I've been going through some things, alright? I'm melancholic. Also, my friend, I can never get over that. There is a chance that it'll be rid of in due time, but... There's no hope. Oh, there is hope. The Grand Tour. Support the Sangha first. Ravenna schools. You seen this text before? So there we go. 153. There, that's just for starters. 19 months. We could go on another grand tour to help to gain us some, to raise more money. You've already mastered your field. Oh, so you can't go to there again, can't you? No. Okay. So you can't go on another university visit when your trade is at the max here. I understand. But if you're a lowly educated character like, say, my son, he can go twice. If he's lucky. I understand now. Hmm. We'll close the episode soon. Again, I may have to switch to another monastery just to give my Vahara a chance for it to rise. And then, uh, I mean, uh, we've only used Jetavana as a way to help us with the stewardship and all that. You've lacked learning. trying to think and please please hurry up three years and I don't know if I got three years to live but going on a grand tour may help you with your um, little issues so that's how you ought to raise your money for that go on another taxation tour save up for all the wealth for inheritance for Vikram Abahu. Such a shame, though, that I just saw him die. Succumb to his eternal weakness. This granddaughter is the future of the realm. But bearing in mind, she's wrathful. Don't want to have that <laughs> to be uh, like that. But still. It's just something we have to think about for the future, the immediate future. So, in the next episode, we'll stop at the January 1st. So, in the next episode, we'll go on one more Grand Taxation Tour for Vijay Abahu before he passes away. And hopefully he'll have some health benefits for the dinners that he'll be having in the next one. So, we'll stop right here. There we go. So, as I said before, we'll do the Grand Tour once again. And after touring the island nation and collecting so much money, <laughs> and then uh, perhaps um, we'll have a good time. And if not, then, um, well, who knows what we're going to do here.
And then perhaps we'll be saving up that money for him to go to the uh, university. That'll be his first task when when he becomes the uh, Agarada. I mean, his life is a Appa prince, if you will. You don't hear too much about it. He only has one rival from long ago. Was slain in battle way back in the day. You're just one bitter old man, ain't you? <laughs> but anyways. Well, we hope you people have enjoyed this episode because I think in this next episode this may be Vijay Bahu's last. So Vijay Bahu the Great. And then perhaps I should also uh, switch to uh, line with another monastery. Because as that costs plenty. We want to do that because that adds, you know, that adds um, sports to different monastery. Yes, that adds to its accumulation, but I think we'll have to accept the fact that it's going to be purification will remain so because of what the others have been doing as of late. So, again. See you in the next episode, but until then, so long for now.